Welcome to the annual Thrift Flip <laughs> Blanket Extravaganza. Sorry, I was laughing because I opened the door and Sagwa surprised me. 2022, this yellow jacket and this inspo became this collared jacket. And I made a mini one for my kid to make up for how in 2021, I was busy making a baby, so there was no blanket thrift flip. But in 2020, this green Ikea throw and this inspo became this suit set. 2019, this quilted blanket and this inspo became this wrap coat. In 2018, this sleeping bag became a jacket so warm I can only wear it during the deepest of polar vortexes. This year, one jacket has risen as the jacket of the year. Look at that skyrocket. It comes from a brand synonymous with luxurious minimalism, a soft take on utilitarian fashion, striking at the time of year when the should I wear a scarf debate every morning is real. Scarf jackets are winter's most viral coat trend. It's the totem embroidered scarf jacket. How do I even begin to explain the totem embroidered scarf jacket? The totem embroidered scarf jacket is flawless. She has two pockets and four cute buttons. I hear she has drop sleeves for spacious layering. I hear her embroidery gives her the artisanal touch. One time she flipped her scarf in my face. It was awesome. All of these features Brings us to a jacket that is just over a thousand dollars American and I'm starting with fifteen dollars that I spent at the thrift store. Yeah? Can we do it? Okay, I found something. A drop shoulder, a loose fit, but the wrong neckline and no buttons. But over here, we've got a neckline that is workable and buttons. I'm gonna drop both these tops and merge them. We want the neckline. We want the buttons. We want the drop shoulder. This is their baby. I basically stole the features that I liked from these two patterns and tried my best to blend them together into one. Down here, I added a little bit extra to make it longer. And I did a similar thing with the back, taking the neckline that I like from this one, the drop shoulder that I like from this one, and procreating this. When you are modifying patterns, there are some general best practices to follow and I'll put a more detailed list in the link in my description. Things like the front shoulder seam, the back shoulder seam should be the same length, the side of the front, the side of the back should be the same length since they are going to meet each other. Ideally, the armhole created is the same size as the sleeve that's going to be attached. That one's a little bit harder to check, so we're going to find out through a mock-up. Guys, we almost never sew a mock-up and that's a choice for better or worse. But this time, you know what? I am stressed. I feel like we only get one shot, one opportunity, one blanket. So I have a back. Look at this fun fabric that I thrifted years ago. And it finally gets to have a little fun out here. I just wanna get the jacket right. I'm less scared of the scarf. So let's see how this looks. I forgot that this material sheds like Crazy. My sewing table looks like I've been sawing a carpet. Okay. The neck, it creeps a little high, but that's easy to fix. It seems workable so far. I'm gonna add the sleeves. Okay, I'm gonna need to compare against a photo. There's a couple of different color versions on the Totem website, and I like the way they shot this one because I can actually see the neck hole. So this is how I know that my neck hole is higher than theirs. Although, now looking at it, I'm not mad at kind of the vintage flair this neckline is giving it. We'll think about it. The shoulders in mine could be dropped more, maybe three to five centimeters. My sleeves were supposed to completely cover my thumb, so that's another area where we need some lengthening. Okay, my jacket needs to be way longer. I probably can use the length of the arm seam and match that to the jacket seam because on theirs, it looks like they are pretty much the same. Also think theirs fits baggier, which gives it that very nice vertical tuck at the armpit, whereas mine is a bit more snug. Definitely not regretting making a draft. Drop the shoulder, lengthen the sleeve, lengthen the jacket, and make it more spacious. That's more changes than I wanted. Whoa. This is a completely different vibe. It's looser. Although I don't feel like I made a lot of progress dropping the shoulder. I basically added 20 centimeters of room 
in here but I don't feel like I made enough progress on the sh shoulder how I've also ran out of fabric so we're mocking up a real Frankenstein the math is not mathing these were supposed to be the same length how did I do that let's attach it for a proper assessment Alrighty, I finished my second mock-up over the weekend. I definitely accomplished my goals. Drop shoulder is farther down. Fit is looser. Bottom, hem, and sleeves, both long, aligned correctly. I want to see though how it compares to the goal. Feels like the drop shoulder could be a little bit farther down. My drop shoulder still could be a bit more extreme, but I definitely achieved that armpit fold that I was looking for. Almost feels like theirs is more vertically tubular and mine seems to balloon a little. Maybe I'll adjust that. My sleeve seems to still have a bit of a curve to it, whereas the goal is ever so slightly a bit flatter. Oh, this shot also makes it seem like the sleeve is actually ever so slightly shorter than the hem. Okay, I can work with that. Overall, definitely a successful second draft. There you go. Also, I did cut off this much already from the sleeve because of, I don't even know how I accidentally made them that long. This is the sleeve with the correct length. Up here, I redrew the sleeve a little bit shallower and all the paper that I cut off here, I taped it to the front and back half of the armhole. <laughs> really hoping this is the right way to do things. This is either genius or a big mistake. Now that the adjustments I want are done, I'm checking if the shoulder seam is lining up. It looks like my front one is a little longer, so I may bring the back one a bit longer to match it. Uh, I don't know. I drew this orange line to try to slim down at the armpit, and these two seams should match too. Anyways, am I ready for the real blanket? <laughs> Pretty big. The blanket is faux quilted, as in the squares are just printed on, but not actually patched together. Fully bound scalloped edge, which I feel like is a shame to not use. Visualizing this was helpful, but it was also scary because it made me realize that ideally I want the different colors of the patchwork to be well spaced from each other, which I feel like requires a lot of foresight. The good news is it's a very large blanket, so I have a lot of material to work with. And the bad news is I would really like to get this done soon. And I cannot afford to just keep sitting on it. I'm gonna lay out the pattern pieces, get a feel for it. I still do not know what I'm gonna do about tassels and the decorative stitching. Oh. This side, I'm gonna treat as the right side up. It has this extra little detail of vine and roses, whereas this side is more blank. You see that? And I kind of like the refreshing touch of green. And upon closer inspection, this part actually is sewn together and not just printed. I love that. The rest of it has this cute, repeating quilting stitch. I also found a fashion label. Oh yeah, Stumix. Behold, <laughs> I laid out the pieces. <laughs> the blanket is folded in half. Here's the sleeve going through two layers. Here's the front bodice trying to maximize the scalped edge. Floating over there is the back bodice. I'm not gonna make any decisions with that one until I cut out these two. Put in a fresh needle, one symmetrical back. Two symmetrical fronts, shoulders first. Step one is always to make a vest. In previous years, the blankets I dealt with often only had one right side, but this year we're fully finished on both sides. And so I don't want any raw seams showing. I'm laughing because what I'm really saying is I wanna do more work. We're doing flat felled seams. I want flat felled seams, but I also don't want them to be too bulky because normally you are not doing flat felled seams with quilted cotton. So I'm trying out a method. This is on the last step before I flop it over and secure it down with a straight stitch. I can't do that yet because I need to go get the trim that I'm gonna sandwich in here. I have a plan. But that's just a top stitch. It won't impact 
the fit so I can still put a lot of this together and get a feel for it. I will show you my tactic. I go to number 10, put it on the longest stitch length. That sews the front to the back along the shoulder with the edges touching, which is not normally part of a flat felt seam, but I'm trying to reduce bulk. I switch back to straight stitch. I'm sewing the back to the front, wrong sides together, but see how you offset this overlock stitch so that it's just hiding on one side of the seam. The other side is clean. That gives you room to flop this over and do a top stitch. And the whole point of the overlock was just so the raw edge would be totally shut away so that this top stitch is super easy. Did that make sense? <laughs> I try to include a link in the description with photos and more detailed steps if you actually plan on doing this. And if you do, please do tag me. I want to see. Every year, actually, it warms my heart how many people try to make a blanket jacket from one of my videos. I have the pattern aligned in the front, which feels like a win. And I'm very happy with the scallop. Shoulders are looking okay. Back is symmetrical, hopefully. Yeah, the armholes should be all right too. I get the nice armpit dimple that I was looking for. Yeah. And the bottom edge is scalloped too. Actually, I'm getting very attached to the scalloping and I'm unsure if I even care to add this decorative trim, but I do feel like this project is incomplete without the trim, so just earlier today, Leticia left me so that she could go to the fabric store and find some trim options. Sleeves are also done, minus the last step of closing the flat felt seam on the trim. Wow! It's coming together. I can't attach the sleeves to the jacket until I have the trim, but what I can do right now is cut the scarf. Sometimes it's math, and sometimes you just have to like, feel how it should be. I really want to use this blanket as efficiently as possible. I'm already sad that I had to go over here to cut out the symmetrical back. That's where the sleeves were, here's where the front was cut out. This kind of looks perfect for the pockets, and then I'm really hoping this right here can be the scarf. So then all this real estate is available to make, who knows? Why am I, what am I saving it for? I don't even know. Okay, this doesn't feel right. The pattern on the blanket is like a little warped, but I also just feel like I definitely did not cut this straight. I'm gonna cut another one. See, it's like, it's not straight. It's weird. What am I supposed to do with this? Okay. All right. Like that's pretty straight, right? I've decided to go edge to edge with this trim because I'm hoping that will just look like a cute way to end the scarf since I just, I can't really figure out how tassels are gonna add to this <laughs> madness. Okay, yes. The challenge I was facing was do I cut a scarf that is the same size as theirs without the tassels or with the tassels. And since I have no plans on doing tassels, I guess, yeah, this is why this feels so much more balanced because it kind of virtually includes the tassel. It's trim day. Trimming the trees, trimming the blanket coat. So here are some photos of the trim options that we were able to find in Toronto. Leticia helped go on a big hunt and get all of these photos. You can see there's varying widths varying aesthetics. I was being really picky. This is what we ended up choosing. It's a lovely little flower lace trim. I think it'll add a subtle touch and I'm kind of nervous how I'm even going to apply it. So I'm going to attach it to the sleeves first since it's kind of an underarm and if things get really confusing there. Hopefully no one will really pay attention. I'm trying to get a feel for it. Trim, no trim. Trim, no trim. 
Which side looks more expensive? Yes, this is the right side. Okay. Quite subtle. It does make it look more expensive. Okay, we proceed. Instead of the regular foot, I'm using one that has a guide piece. I bring the needle fully to one side and I'm sewing a straight stitch, making the flat felt seam and catching the flowers at the same time. This only does one half of the flowers, so I go back to the top, bring the needle over to the opposite side, and add one more straight stitch to lock in the flowers. That gets me this outcome. Is it okay that I'm going over it with two straight stitches? I feel like maybe there's a classier way. I might try a different approach on the shoulders. This does give a really clean finish on the other side though, so we talking reversible? All right, here's another way to do it. So first it was a regular flat felt seam. I pushed that raw material over, did a top stitch, and then I chose this guy, 305. Okay, at first I chose this guy, but it was too chaotic. 305 was a little bit better. I've got a white thread loaded on top, but I kept the pink thread on the bottom, and I used that to sew the trim down all the way it ends up making the flowers pretty secure, but it looks way nicer than a zigzag stitch. See, look, it's cute little stars. Happy with it. So if you don't want any trim, plain flat felt seam. And if you do want trim, I think it's cute to add it with a decorative stitch, or if necessary, pin it down with two straight stitches. I think this one looks the cutest. The whole point of all that pizzazz is because if you just do like one straight stitch down the middle of the lace it is secured but the moment you wash it the lace ends are all gonna get like gross and warped and you'll have to iron it every time and so it's best to figure out a way for the stitches to like lock it in. Finally I can attach the sleeves. <sighs> First broken needle. Probably about time that I change the needle anyways. This is a record, because I broke like six needles back when I made that sleeping bag jacket. I've also reached the point with every blanket jacket where I'm, I'm sweating. Sewing is cardio. Sleeves are fully attached and trimmed at the drop shoulder. I'm feeling happy. I guess I need to sort out the Thank you to this jacket for giving me the easiest style of pockets possible. These rectangles, I did a straight stitch to just lock in the raw edge. I think I'm gonna do that star stitch and get the trim on all in one go. I also kept the scallop trim for the top of the pockets. Cute, no? Okay, I'm doing everything I can to try to get the placement right. I also forgot I need to do the top trim first before I start securing it with the trim to the jacket. Here we go. Look at that. I managed to turn the corners, stops. Confidence building. Okay, last thing before bedtime. Here's some of the bias tape that Leticia worked so hard to make today. I've got this raw neckline and I'm just gonna give it a wrap. I got so much needed rest. Last night I finished the neckline. We've got pockets. Leticia helped me wrap the entire scarf 
in bias tape. She also found us some cute buttons. Two options. Many jackets deal with a shank style button because those ones handle thicker materials better since the button is elevated off of the fabric. Four little pink cuties. But I did ask Leticia if she could find something with a little more whimsy and look at these. They're so cute. They're not shank style. So the upside is I can easily attach them with the sewing machine. Downside is they'll fit a bit more snug. But I don't know, this isn't like the thickest of blankets. I really hope these ones work out. Vote now in the comments. This one, safe, maybe sophisticated. This one's just <laughs> pure whimsy. This is why I don't do any extreme sports, no bungee jumping, no skydiving, because I spent all my nerves seeing if I could buy as close as possible to the exact amount of trim I need for this project. We made it. Now over here we have the final challenge. I would say it's pretty critical to be wearing an item when you decide on where the buttons are gonna go because you are not a flat surface. I had these little pins to tell me where the curve of the jacket needs to land. And then I pinned in these buttons in roughly the spacing that I thought would work. But on the ground, what I did here was actually use a ruler to properly measure their distance. I came up with a 16 centimeter gap and we're gonna put those holes in and pray that I do not mess up when I'm this deep into this jacket. Hello, <laughs> it's too cold for this. I finished attaching the buttons. I'm very proud of how it looks. And the scarf is on, so I'll give you a spin. Ooh. 